short man from Texas, a man of the wild, thrown into combat, put on his life pile. Hides his emotions, his blood's running cold. Just like his victories, his story unfolds. Right, a white light, if there be any glory in war, let it rest on them like hell. So, they brought out this tank. Now, this I remember from the comic thing. It was a pretty fun little thing. I remember it deeply well. Only one problem. It was designed to take on fucking planes! Not tanks! So, again, I don't know why, but... I'm not discreeping the tank because this tank has a lot of benefits to it for an annoying little bastard of a vehicle. I thought, like, the mauler was annoying because if it's auto-reload and they can't kill anything, or, no, sorry, the maul, yeah, the mauler, and I thought that was annoying. Who knew? This is more annoying. This is more heavily annoying because, holy crap, but I'm getting ahead of myself. You want to know what other things does this tank has? Well, Usually, if you're new to my channel, or if you're new here, I always like to start off with reviewing the armaments. And looking at this, oh god. <laughs> there is no armaments at all in the front of this tank. I mean, don't get me wrong, it has some angle slope parts armor from the front and the head, because it has a rotatable fucking turret, which, again, anything that's angle, less damage, really nice thing. However, though... Just having only like a couple of millimeters, like you're talking about like 12 meter, uh, millimeters and 19 millimeters, yeah, you're going to get blown away pretty easily, especially when you got to deal with the American rockets. Fuck those light tank rockets. You have no idea how many times I've played this tank, audience. I have played this like literally, I would say like five times. I know that doesn't seem a lot, but dear God, the rockets... They kill you instantly, nearly destroying your tank completely, because this tank has nothing, nearly one shooting you. I can't show you a video clip because it got corrupted, but there were so many attempts, I got blown away by a rocket. So it's going to definitely involve spawn liner, but there's a lot of other things it needs. But the other thing that's a little bit beneficiary, despite the fact of the rockets, um, you have literally three layers actually four layers of armaments between your side a little bit so like if you go by let's see what the first one real quick you got pretty much the main cheek of the entire skirt is 40 millimeters then you got the inside of the tank if i can get to the armaments you got the inside plus the little upper plate thing of 25.4 millimeters. And this is all flat, so I'm doing like a little adding thing in there in the top to tell you how much millimeters. I mean, it's not going to make a difference, but still, that's a lot of millimeters to pen through. And if you hit the track piece, that's 20 millimeters. So you got a decent amount of blocking for your own tank you're against to. But let's face it, it's Cold War Fury. Nothing's going to survive that thing that low. You have to have like literally 250 millimeters if you want to do something. But it does have a little bit of small liner kind of thing to it. So if you try to shoot at this and it doesn't pen some areas, well, the reason why is because you shot somewhere where there's multiple layers of armor where the shell stops somewhere on it. Or RNGs is bullshit that usually works in this game heavily half the time in this game. I mean, I don't want to go into more detail with the armaments because literally, that's the only thing unique. Besides one thing, I'm going to point to it with an arrow if I can get a good angle. I'll point to it right now. That piece is not a part of the tank. Meaning, if you're trying to shoot the tank and shoot its strongest part, which surprisingly, it's the side thing. Not those, but this part. The 57 millimeter part. If you hit that middle part that you see right there, it doesn't pen the tank. I have seen two shots in video games where literally it shot that and it did nothing. So 
keep in mind, because it's not welded to the tank, it's not part of the tank, that you have a good chance of blocking something with that one shell. But that's like a one of a million. Out of all the spots they can hit you, that's like a one of a million lucky shot. Like the th scene of Tom Hanks where they shot the helmet, and it's like bloody fucking lucky that it didn't go through until it killed him at the end. Um, so... Anyway, the armor is crap. So you're probably saying, okay, Fury, um, not to burst your bubble, but I've been looking at the chart up above, and you're seeing 90 damage out of penetration. Fury, what the hell is that? Well, since you were eager Bieber and look up to the top there, besides me reviewing the armaments, let's talk about the one thing that is always guaranteed for this tank that is annoying. This thing has a 60 millimeter cannon. Now you're probably wondering just like, taking your glasses off or slamming like just going nuts going like 60 millimeters 60 millimeters what the fuck are you gonna do with 60 millimeters this is a fucking what cold war era where tanks are usually 185 millimeters of armor what the 60 millimeter gonna do hang on hold your horses because it would even tell you on the side there firing rate is 42.67 and you're probably like Fury, that's a long time for something for a 60 mil. Not alone, dude, 90 damage, it says on the paper. So, what the hell? What does this do? This thing shoots 12 rounds. I Either 12 or 10. I lost count every time I pull the trigger. But it, it does so much damage if you pen all those shots. If you pen them. Yes, it's guaranteed it is in 60 mil, so a lot of 60 mils are not going to easily pen a tank head on, obviously, because this is a light tank audience. Light tanks are designed to flank, so guarantee you that is going to be annoying. But having 12 rounds with 90 uh, pen shooting nonstop at them, like you're looking at like a, a minute, second firing to part of every shell you're firing, that, that's pretty fucking insane. Now, granted, yes, the 90, uh, 90 damage. I highest I ever do is 80 to 65 playing this tank. It's literally a downright F fail of damage. However, 12 shots firing at a tank. This tank is not designed to kill people easily. Oh, no, 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 no. The armadillo is not designed to kill people. It is designed to destroy modules. It is designed to set people on fire. It is designed to kill your crew. It isn't designed to kill you, though. Because if you try to 1v1 a tank, the armadillo can't kill it. Unless you can outrun it and run away to reload that gun again and shoot him again if you avoid his gun. Maybe. But if you're trying to kill it in a multiplayer game... Yeah, it's rare to see anyone kill anything. But if you leave it alone, it's goddamn annoying. Especially how much pen... Well, you don't have any pen, really, because we're going to go to the ammunition in a minute. And plus, it does tell it right there. I'll show it up again on the screen. 100 meters is, like, right in front of them, and it's 182. Barely making the pen what you need to pen heavy or medium tanks in this game. but. 2,000 meters away, which is averagely how you snipe across the map. Only 97 millimeters of pen. There's only one, or actually no, two tanks if you don't pen it. You could pen this if it's not in front of you because of the angle slope. And then the Hiss tank you could pen, which still is my most favorite tank out of all of the G.I. Joe. I'm sorry, G.I. Joe, but Cobra kind of wins that department, but we'll talk about more about that in a minute at the end. But the it can only do those types of tanks of damage. It's not designed to go up against mediums. It's not designed to go up against heavies unless you do, like I was going to tell you in a few minutes, if you play in a squad of four people with you, it will help you deal with the problem this is a tank that has to be squat up with four people it has to have four people with you not three in a squad not two like your two best friends and then you no it needs a squad of four you need to be a five-man squad kind of you know including you to push on to the enemy 
This tank cannot snipe unless you want to spam premium, which will go right now to the ammunition cost. AP is literally freaking 130. Really cheap. Really good at making money if you pen your shots. I keep 137 of them because they're extremely effective. Now, I get it. Yes, on paper, you're seeing right on the front part of your screen, sniping it from that far away, 97. This tank is not the Hiss tank. It cannot snipe. Worth a dick. Unless you load this. The APDS is literally 4, 000, I mean, 400 credits for one show. Now you're probably thinking, Theory, that's cheap. Think about this. You shoot 12 shots. Times that by freaking 12. Yeah. That's more expensive. Think about that. <sighs> so I keep 45 just in case I'm the last man alive, but I rarely never load them unless I'm the last one alive. And also, you know, heap. <laughs> if they call it H E P, I keep ten. I know it, it's useless. It's still the same price as armor piercing, so there's no point in going cheaper. But ninety five penetration, you could harm the hiss tank at certain angles and do more damage. That's like if I'm like up against hiss by myself and I can outflank it by getting around his rear end. If you can, you know, avoid his godly clutch turn time, that I can like easily harm him with more damage that's the problem it's like trying to salvage more damage from a average roll of 80 to 75 damage shotgun and that's the biggest problem so now let's talk about if you do own this or you're curious if you see this tank and you want to know how to play better there is numerous ways to play this first and foremost let's talk about the one thing this tank is very small. Very small. If you look at the character model, it's small. Now, I did brought up the Mauler when I told how small it is. This one's smaller. This one's like, like really, her head is really right where the, above where the gun is barely holding up. That is beautifully perfect. And I know you're going to say, Fury, this is Cold War. Cold War does not have concealment. Right. I get that, but I proved when I did the Mauler case, there is concealment for small tanks. Because if you're in Vietnam or something like that, you can hide in a bush. And thanks to G.I. Joe painting this green, you can literally hide in the bushes. Although I'm pissed off that we can't customize our skins for, you know, urban cities and deserts. Because, and winter, I forgot we get one in winter, map because... Honestly, for these type of small tanks, camouflage in true vision mode would work as long as you're not detected. I know that doesn't work if you're detected, but if you're not detected, like my Hiss tank, how I usually play it, it works fine. But I know, the guns can't pen that far away unless you load premium. So if you load premium and load in the back and do that, you could do some damage, but you're not going to make your money. I'll guarantee you that. I've tried that one game. You're not going to make your money back. It's gonna lose so much if you don't pen every single shot which you probably could for having like nearly up to 182 you you probably could but not my cup of tea i'd rather go brawling with it so for equipments again you need you know invents ventilations you definitely need improved ventilations definitely a must own um because of the auto reloader in this damn thing, not the Italians, they'd be confused. I'm talking about reloader, like, you know, like the Iron Rain and the Nomad for any veterans that are watching this. It has like that type of reloading system. So ventilation's a must. There is no reloading one. So I put on like aiming speed because if I have to like sit there and shoot something, it's going to need it. But you don't really need that. You could have gun stabilization where shells accuracy because like if again if you're trying to snipe with premium <laughs> you need that more than ever um but that's only if you're gonna shoot only premium only out of it It'd be a waste of equipment if you did that um you don't need advanced zooming 
You don't need camouflage. I mean, you could reduce the tank's durability if you want to hide with this, since it is a tiny tank, but there's really no point because, again, it's designed to be up front shooting people on the side while being distracted. Now, Spall Liner is a must. I don't have it installed because I put in advanced optics to see better because I want to see my enemy before I run into bad trouble, because that's usually what life players like. They like Sixth Sense and all that to make sure if they're going to go detect someone, they want to make sure they have a backup plan to get the hell out of there, like any professional light tanker does. Um, I usually use binoculars, but now after seeing the American um, light tanks division where they shoot rockets, Spawn Liner is now definitely a must have to be in this tank. Now, again, like I said, I don't have it installed. I may change it in the future, but it's it's not designed to do that kind of shit. It's not designed to do that because it like literally getting hit with a rocket. I've seen like you're going to see in the clip battle, someone took like 856 damage of a rocket and he was a heavy heavy tank. And think about that. If that high explosive harms that heavy tank, and correctly to tell you, it is the Mombat, then you see what I'm talking about with this little one. Like, what chance does this little one have? Absolutely nothing. Um, you could increase its speed. It's pretty fast. Like, I didn't talk about its fast. It's at 82. Um, hilly terrain, it'll probably be like 71 or something. So, a little bit hard on the clutch braking. However, I'm going to warn you. If you're going to do quick drive-bys kind of play style, you're not going to like it because the turret head turns slow. It turns sluggish. So, be mindful if you're trying to use this as a, um, you know, a hit-and-run tank like the Hiss tank or the, um, the Mombat. Or not Mombat, Jesus. I mean, the Mauler. <laughs> then you do not want to do that with this tank. Like, the head turning is a little sluggish when you're trying to do quick turn events, so be mindful of that if you try to do that. Um, What else am I missing in the equipment thing? Um, That's basically it. I mean, increased speed, you can do that if you want, but you need the reloading and you need spa liner. So whatever the last perk you want is your decision how much you play. And obviously the basics of your tanks. Like, I usually go by the old-fashioned fire extinguisher, health, and repair kit. Because, again, it's a light tank. I can lose a crew easily. I can get set on fire easily. And I can definitely get tracked. <laughs> so, I don't want to do that. I know the healing thing is a part of the tank, but we'll talk about that. I mean, honestly, you could. Now let's talk about the beloved girl here. If anyone remembers my... uh arctic hiss review i was questioning why she was there but the tank wasn't when the arctic hiss tank came out when i did a little video on that if you want to see my description on that i'll leave it down in the comments below but um yeah i now i see her tank and so far you're probably wondering what skills should i put into this tank well obviously born leader is a must because of the reloading and rapid reloader this gets it down to like 16.5 for me or 15 point something i don't remember exactly it could be 16.5 but that's a better chance of reloading something that only does 90 or 80 or 75 damage a shot so it's chances are it's best bet to keep that reloading but also i put in dead eye now you're probably wondering dead eye for something with a 60 mil, hear me out. It has a 6 chance of damaging enemies, crews, and modules with APCR, AP, heat, and shells like that. Think about this. It's a 12 rapid shooting tank. It literally shoots so many shells at this tank very quickly, very effectively. So having that 6 chance of 12 shots guarantees there's going to be a module damage or a crew damage. And remember... This is a premium tank to make money or train crew. And what do you get out of more XP in this than besides killing? Well, obviously you don't get much of killing if you steal kills. Is you physically harming the tank greatly. And this tank does its job really perfectly doing that. 
But what other perks could you put in it? Well, you could put in Quick Thinker if you want to do that, but that'd be wasting a perk slot unless you want to waste 90 gold to replace the perk. So, yeah, I wouldn't do that. Um, Snapshot may be a must if you're turning this into a hit and run. Definitely a must for this. Um, accuracy time, definitely. That would be a perfect thing if you want to have your reticle down a little bit, especially if you're in a tight situation when you have to hold down. Um, rapid aim, increase the turret and gun rotation speed. Definitely yes, especially if you're turning this into a hit and run because how a little bit of sluggish the head turret a little bit turns. Um... And the rest is basic thing. You can have 6 cent, but there's really no point because you're a light tank and you should be able to spot them if it has a spotting problem for you. It never does for me, but if it has a spotting problem for you, um, then use 6 cents to help you out. Um, increase maximum range. Uh, yes and no. I mean, think about it. It's not designed heavily as a sniper unless you're going to turn this into a premium spamming tank. Which, not really a good idea. Um, mark of target, maybe. But you're in the front lines with your team. So, spotting a tank, maybe that perk. Um, reduces chance of fire, definitely a must. This thing does get set on fire. And you're going to need armament perks. Because of those freaking rocket shooters. You're going to need to protect yourself with Spawn Liner and that because holy Hannah, one rocket kills this tank like nothing. And it's like, wow, okay, yeah, it's definitely a must for this tank. So, yeah, I mean, the rest is all up to your personal choice to put on there, but I'm just saying, like, the major ones you, you could change and stuff. So, you, you pretty much know tanks by now, you should know these perks by system by now. But I get it, you're trying to understand, like, the best way to put for this type of tank for only this type of commander alone. And, honestly, it the more chance of damaging it, setting it on fire and stuff like that, able to help you aim a little bit better at close range and turning your turret a lot more faster to drive by them, yeah, definitely a must. Definitely a must for this tank. Alright, so... Let's get to the battlefield to show you what I'm talking about, how annoying this is. It's a quick video, but... Alright, guys, here we are in the first game, and sorry, Kitchen, I have to talk to you another time. <laughs> so, anyways, the armadillo. My personal thing about it. After everything... Oop, I didn't mean to do that. Let me go back to it. There's my tank. After everything I said, basically, this tank is so annoying. And I'm not talking about, like, damage-wise. Damage-wise is under power, you're going to say to yourself, like I said. The pending is god-awful. So, Fury, like, why would we want this? Well, you're going to see right now in a few minutes. So, right now, I'm doing like I said you're supposed to do. Stay with four people. And so far, I'm staying with four people, but I'm shooting away this Hellcat. And you're thinking, okay, okay, Fury, you can stop shooting it. You can stop shooting it, Fury. Nope, I killed it. <laughs> and I still have a bullet left. This thing is annoying to big tanks. No matter how you want to sugarcoat it, this tank is the most annoying light tank. This is, reminds me, you know what it reminds me of, audience? It reminds me of the Panzer IC. Like... Really small, really annoying, doesn't pen really well with a small gun, but can pen a lot of shots. Just look at that. I'm just only firing a few clips, trying to shoot, shoot, wasn't paying attention, and then his tank decided to give me a hug. It's like, get the hell out of here, Cobra. We're enemies, for fuck's sake, but we're on the same team for right now. God, that would be a, a nightmare. Cobra and G.I. Joe had to combine strength against a common enemy. What the hell enemy would that be? But, um, <laughs> so yeah. So I'm basically trying to play it smart. I'm trying to play aggressively like you're supposed to. Now, you could you snipe with this? Uh, kind of no. Without premium, no. So I'm trying to make money by just brawling. But it doesn't. It works out in the end. And this guy's trying to retreat, and I'm like, "Where are you going? I'm gonna toothpick your ass to death." And that's literally why I can see why this is called armadillo because. Look at that! I just like fired quills at that damn tank's rear end and did so much damage. 
Now we're pushing along, pushing along. He's dead, so I'm pushing along to stay with it. I'm trying to stay with the group because, again, this tank is not designed to stay alive by itself. It needs help. It needs support. If it's by itself, it's fucked. Like, you cannot simply just... Well, you could drive by and stuff like that, but because, like I said before, light tanks, like with the artillery or rocket shooting, can kill this in one hit. I've had, like, an AI match where I died instantly. So I'm sneaking up on uh, the G.I. Joe tank, trying to encourage my team to hold this position. Of course, a rocket just hit him. He lost 800 hit points. God, those rockets. The rockets need to be fucking nerfed. They do way too much damage, and they scare the living hell out of me, because every time I see a rocket, I go on a panic attack. Like right there, I almost got hit by a rocket. So I'm trying to give the team enough time, because we're capping the base, and again, I don't know why it's saying it's orange, it's blue for us on the, if you look at the mini-map. So I'm trying to fire along, fire along, trying to get their attention, and I'm shooting the rear end of this tank. I'm like, no, and then we won. <laughs> And that's the best way to show what this tank is like, honestly, because this little annoying little bastard may be, you know, under power with its gun. It may be can't kill anything by itself. However, it can be annoying. Now, you're probably going to say, well, Fury, that was a crap game showing. Why would you show us this? There's probably people out there that did better. I bet you weren't even on the top three leaderboard. Well, now... I hate to burst your bubbles, whoever thought that, because honestly, top of the leaderboard. <laughs> you know, granted, I didn't do a lot of damage, but I'm grand up there with the top leaderboard of how many pens I've done. And we'll see that in a minute, but I just wanted to show you guys, like, I was actually shocked to be on the top leaderboard, to be honest with you. Like, I, I shouldn't be. But you know what? It's fine. <laughs> and there you have it, folks. Honestly, there it is. I made 159,000 credits. If I didn't have premium, that's 111,000 credits. I didn't do best with damage. I didn't do the best killing. But see where it says direct hits? You're always going to beat best as long as there's no other armadillo. There is no other tank in Cold War right now. From this video right here with the time period. I don't know in the future if you watched this beyonds and beyonds ago. That This is the king of pending shit. There's no doubt about it. I mean, not pending, pending, like it doesn't have a good gun, but like I said, it does its job at direct hits. And it can get you completed so many challenges and stuff like that. So, there I am on the leaderboard, first place. Again, I don't know how, but maybe it's because... No, I didn't get no assist damage. Nobody got no assist damage. Wow, that's the first time I've ever seen an entire team on their, on our team got zero assists. It's all us doing damage. Huh. Weird. But anyway. Okay, so final verdict on the if it I don't know why it keeps doing that glitch, guys. That's the second time it did that. So final verdict for the armadillo. Um so let's recap real quick. Just really quick. You got an amazing fire rate. Amazing fire rate. However, you got low damage. You got very tiny tank, but very horrible at pending heavily armored tanks, such as like the Mombat and the Cat. You're going to have to flank it or get really behind it, which you can because this tank is pretty vast. That's another plus. I don't know how to rate this tank because honestly, because... No, no, granted, for, don't get me wrong. Let me go to the store real quick, just to show you guys. Um, granted, it's cheaper than the Hiss tank, which people told me in the Hiss review, saying, like, there's rockets on there that you could fire at people, just like the um, guns you fire at people. I don't know if that's true or not. Leave it down in the comments below if that is. But it was literally only 14,000. It was only, like, I think it was 14,000. I have to like double check with some online thing. If I'm wrong, uh, right or wrong, leave in the comments. But it was not a bad expensive tank. Now, however, it still doesn't excuse the fact of how much money you have to pay for the tank. I mean, think about this. You're paying 14,000 or 13,000, depending on what it says. I, I don't remember what it says when I bought the tank. 
So you have like 14,000, 13,000 gold. And you bought this. And you're probably saying to yourself, well, this is not a bad tank. I mean, granted, gun's a little eh, but that's a lot of gold. And the problem is with the gun, it is the weakest millimeter gun. And I thought, to be honest with you, the Mauler was bad. But the Mauler has accuracy where it could snipe. His tank is still my far my favorite light tank in the game. Besides, the rockets now came out. It's like, oh god, those rockets, I swear. They do way too much damage. But then you got Armadillo, which has the lowest gun and penetration for its tier class. Not to mention it's tier 2. I mean, to me personally, audience, this tank needs a major buff. It needs a major buff. Now, I know what you're thinking. That rapid-fire gun fury, you want to buff that shit and be cancerous? No, 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 no. I get it. But, however, you get one-shotted by anyone with a rocket. You get gun that barely can pen anything besides its own light tanks. I mean, I don't know. Leave If you're a light tank player, please leave in the comments below thinking how you think this is. Or someone who has this. Because I know people had it. I've seen some people bought this today and and there's really not much of it to say about it i mean it's a fun tank i mean light tanks i'm getting a lot more fun into because they're just hit and run tanks where most of the times when you play a heavy tank you're kind of fucked because literally if your team fucked you you're got nowhere to run where light tanks can get the hell out of there if they need to but um so final verdict um this one's going to be difficult because, granted, it's going to be a low enough price to probably where it's going to be like 12,500 gold easily or lower than that. Maybe it'll be the first ever Cold War tank, G.I. Joe tank that's under like as 55 bucks where everything else is like 60 or something. I don't know. Um, but for, for the full bundle, I would have to give it a, hmm, I would give it a 5.9 out of 10. Because even though you get the commander, which you're going to need because the commander needs to give you more chances of critical hit damage percentage because you've got a rapid fire gun and you can actually harm more modules with those guns. Um, you're going to need a lot more perks for the reloading, that's for sure. Um, but again, for the tank itself, it's pretty fun. But the problem is it can't kill anything by itself. It cannot kill anything by itself it needs help it needs to be in a squad of four tanks four tanks not the three squad that you get in the game no you need to be in a squad of four like you need like literally like you're going to like a squad of five moving in because that's that's the best way to survive it's literally five tank squad this is literally a stay in a huge group tank now, granted, yes, if you load premium, you could snipe in the back with it and stuff like that. But, again, like I said before, true vision is still a thing. Meaning, if you shoot in the back and you're caught in the open and they don't detect you, they're still going to fucking see you. So, just be mindful of that, just if you're going to plan on using this as a sniper. Um, but anyway, but for the tank itself, honestly, if it comes down to a very low price, I'll give it a buff, like a 6 out of 10, if it's just by itself. But for right now, 5.9 seems reasonably good for this type of tank, and honestly, for the price they're asking for, is not bad compared to the Arctic Hiss tank that is extremely expensive, which I'm waiting to the very end to buy that and review it. But, to an all in all, that's my final verdict on it. So I hope this helps you comrades out there. And I hope it shows you how to play it a little bit better. And I will see you comrades in the next video. Take care guys.